In this video, we're going to be looking at probability equations. Now, this topic does involve ratios. So if you don't understand ratios properly, please go and watch my video on ratios first. Okay, so let's start by looking at this question. So take a moment, pause the video and have a read. Okay, so we're told that the ratio of red and blue counters is two to one. And it's also told us the probability of picking two blue counters. And we ought to work out the number of counters in the bag. So this is the ratio which we know from the question, that red and blue counters are in the ratio of two to one. Now, since the question's told us the probability of picking two blue counters, we're going to make an equation about picking up two blue counters. Now, if we want to work out the probability of picking two blue counters, we need to know how many blue counters are in the bag. So it's about number of counters rather than the ratio. So to make our probability equation, we need to start thinking about number of counters. And at the moment, we don't know the number of counters. So we're going to start by saying there's X amount of blue counters. And of course, if there's X amount of blue counters, there's twice as many red counters. So there will be two X amount of red counters. Now it's important that we do this first because when we're making our probability equation, we need to be talking about number of counters. So now when we're doing our probability equation, when we're talking about picking a blue counter, we can say what the probability of picking a blue counter is. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's work out the probability of picking two blue counters. So there's X blue counters, and it's going to be over the total amount of counters, which is 2X plus X, which is 3X. So picking a blue counter is X over 3X. Now we're going to pick another blue counter. So that X over 3X we've done, a lot of you might say that from the ratio we can get that because X over 3X is just simply one third. And from the ratio you can just get one third. But the next fraction we make, when we're picking the second blue counter, it's only possible if we've done it this way. So you must do it the way we're doing it here. Okay, so we're gonna pick another counter. Now, it's going to be a blue counter, and there's one less blue counter. So there was X amount before, now there's going to be X minus one amount of blue counters. And the total was three X, of course, if there's one blue out of the bag, it's going to be three X minus one. So there's our second pick, X minus one over three X minus one. And this fraction you can only get if you've done it this method. And we know the answer to this because it was in the question. It's one over 12. So we've got our probability equation. So we're gonna start by starting to simplify this. Now to make your life a lot easier, you should definitely cancel down the X over three X. Since X is at the top and the bottom, you can cancel it off. And doing that is gonna make your equation much easier to solve. If you don't do that, you're going to get a quadratic to solve, which will be a lot more tougher. Okay, so let's go ahead and times these fractions together. And you should be able to do that quite easily. The top state is X minus one, since it multiplied to one, and the bottom was times by three, so it became nine X minus three. And of course, that's still equal to one over 12. Now, we're going to do some cross multiplying here. So since this is a grade nine topic, I assume you're good with algebra. So what's going to happen is nine X minus three is going to times the one on top of the 12. And that 12 is going to times the X minus one. And this is what we get. Now some basic algebra to solve what X is. And the good thing is it's a linear equation. So we get three X equals nine and dividing both sides by three, we get X equals three. Now we worked out the value of X. However, the question wanted us to work out how many counters are in the bag. And we said there's two X red counters and there's X blue counters, which means there's three X amount of counters in the bag. So we need to work out what three X is. And of course we already know three X is equal to nine. So we can say there's nine counters in the bag. So that wasn't too bad. So let's try another question. So we're given that green and blue counters are in the ratio of four to one. 
and they told us the probability of picking two blue counters. And we need to work out how many green counters are in the bag. So this is the ratio the question has told us. It's four to one, green to blue. Now again, we're going to be working out the probability of picking two blue counters. So we need to be talking about amount of counters. So the ratio as it is won't help us. So what I've done here is the same as the last question. I said there's X amount of blue counters, which means there's four X amount of green counters because they're in the ratio of four to one. There's four times as many green counters as there is blue counters. And now we're dealing with amount of counters, which we need to work out the probability of two blue counters. So remember with all of these probability equations, we need to be talking about amount of counters. Okay, so since questions told us the answer to working at two blue counters, we're going to make an equation about that. So we need to pick up blue counter first. Now there's X amount of blue counters and how many total amount of counters is there? And you should have said 5x. 4x plus x is 5x. So the probability of picking our first blue counter is x over 5x. Now we're picking another blue. There's going to be one less blue counter and one less total for the denominator. So we've got x minus 1 at the top and 5x minus 1 at the bottom. And of course, from the question, we know this is equal to 1 over 35. And we've got our probability equation. Next step is we're going to tidy up a little bit. That x over 5x, we must cancel that down. It makes the working out a lot easier. So that x over 5x has become 1 over 5. We've just cancelled off the x's. Now we're going to simply times these fractions. And you should be able to do that. The top stayed the same and the bottoms become 25x minus 5. Now we're going to do that cross multiplying again. That 25x minus 5 will times the 1. And the 35 will go ahead and times the x minus 1. Now we've got ourselves a simple linear equation. We just need to make x a subject and solve it. And we get 10x equals 30. And dividing both sides by 10, we get x equals 3. Now if we go back to the question, the question wanted us to work out how many green counters are in the bag. And we know there's 4x amount of green counters. So if x equals 3, we can now say 4x is 12. So there's 12 amount of green counters. And that question wasn't too bad. So in this question, we're told that there's n amount of counters in the bag. And we're also told there's three yellow counters. And the question's also told us that the probability of picking two yellow counters is 1 over 15. And we need to find the value of n. Now, this question is a lot different to the other two questions because it hasn't given us a ratio. It's already told us about amounts of counters. It's told us as n amount total and there's three yellow ones. So we don't need to start off with the ratio and turn into amount of counters like we had to do before. It's very important you notice that in this question, we're already talking about amount of counters. So since it's told us the probability of working at two yellow counters, we're going to make an equation about working out two yellow counters. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, when we're picking our first yellow counter, we know how many yellow counters there is in the bag. It's three. And we know the total amount of counters in the bag is n. So it's simply going to be three over n. That's on our first pick. Now we need to pick another yellow counter. So of course, it's going to be one less yellow counter. So instead of three yellow counters, we're going to have two yellow counters. And instead of n total, we're going to have n minus one as total, because there's one less now. And of course, the question has told us the answer to this, so we can equal it to one over 15. And we've got our probability equation. Now in this case, there's no cancelling down to be done. So we can go ahead and times these fractions. So three times a two to make six, and n times is the n minus one, which is gonna give us n squared minus n. And you shouldn't have too many problems with that. Again, we'll do that cross multiplying, the n squared minus n will times the one, and the 15 will times the six. Now this time we've got ourselves a quadratic to solve. 
Now, as with all quadratics, we need to equal it to zero. So I suggest move the 90 to the right hand side. Now you should be able to factorize this. It's nice and easy. And if you've got problems with factorizing, definitely go back and watch the video on factorizing quadratics. So we managed to factorize it, n minus 10 and n plus nine. So from that, we can say what n is. So we have our two answers, n equals 10 and n equals minus nine. Of course, we know we can ignore n equals minus nine because n is the amount of counters in the bag and there cannot be a negative amount of counters. So we know our n is 10. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.